In the ever-embroiled conflict of Eastern Congo, recent developments have heightened tensions between the Democratic Republic of the Congo and its neighbor, Rwanda. Over the past week, Congolese forces have captured more than 60 prisoners of war, POWs, believed to be fighters affiliated with the M23 rebel group. Notably, some of these POWs have raised eyebrows due to their attire, which strikingly resembles the uniforms of the Rwandan Defense Force. In this video, we will look at the current situation, presenting both sides of the story to see how accurate these allegations are. Meanwhile, please leave your comments in the comment section below to give us more insights and newer perspectives on this topic. Also, please help us reach our goal of getting to 100,000 subscribers before the end of this month. Let's continue. During interrogations, one of the captured fighters, filmed on camera, confessed to being a Rwandan soldier deployed to Congo merely two days before his capture. This admission has reignited accusations of Rwandan involvement in the conflict, further complicating an already volatile situation. Observers point to a pattern of Rwandan troop rotations into Congo, suggesting a coordinated effort by Rwanda to intervene in the conflict. Reports indicate that Rwandan soldiers are deployed to Congo for brief periods, only to be replaced by fresh contingents, indicating ongoing military support for the M23 rebels. In a tragic turn of events, a high-ranking military commander from the Rwandan army was recently killed in North Kivu, Congo, along with his escorts. This incident underscores the lethal nature of the conflict and the involvement of Rwandan forces in Congolese territory. Video evidence of the commander's funeral in Rwanda further confirms the cross-border ramifications of the conflict. Moreover, allegations have surfaced regarding Rwanda's provision of surface-to-air missile platforms to its troops in Congo, suggesting a well-equipped and organized Rwandan military presence in the region. The Congolese government and international observers have labeled these troops not as rebels, but as Rwandan forces operating within Congolese borders. The gravity of these revelations cannot be overstated, as they point to a deepening of the conflict and the involvement of external actors in perpetuating instability in eastern Congo. Calls for accountability and international intervention have grown louder as the humanitarian toll of the conflict continues to mount. Rwandan authorities have denied these allegations, dismissing them as unfounded and politically motivated. However, the mounting evidence of Rwandan involvement raises serious questions about the prospects for peace in the region. As tensions escalate and evidence of Rwandan involvement mounts, the international community faces a critical juncture in its response to the conflict in eastern Congo. The need for diplomatic solutions and concerted efforts to address the root causes of the conflict has never been more pressing. Only through sustained engagement and collaboration can the cycle of violence and instability in the region be broken, paving the way for a future of peace and stability for the people of Congo and the wider Great Lakes region. 